Hello, friends. My name is Dr. Terry Johnson, and I'm the Vice President for Mission and Spiritual Care. I just want to say that I am so proud of you for watching this video. It shows that you are facing your grief, and the only way that we can heal or work through our grief is by facing it. So I want you to embrace this program you're about to watch. Feel free to share it with family, with friends. Feel free to watch it even multiple times. And if there's anything that we can do to help you with your grief, please feel free to reach out to us. And remember this, you're not in this alone. God bless you, and we're thinking of you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Sydney Barclay, Senior Chaplain at Adventist Health Portland. This evening, we invite you to pray with us. O oh God of love and comfort, we bring to you the families that hold dear the memories of those who are no longer with us. May your divine love surround them during these holiday seasons. May they experience peace through the holidays, even in the difficult moments. Bless our event. May it bring hope to each person watching. Amen. When 
Good evening once again. I've had the privilege of working with Dr. Pam Strong for close to six years while she served as chaplain at Portland Adventist Health. Dr. Pam has a strong gift of understanding grief and helping people work with it and through it. She has been a chaplain for close to 20 years, and in 2018, she graduated from George Fox University with her doctorate specializing in grief. I know you're going to be truly blessed by these words that she's going to share with us. Thank you, Dr. Terry Johnson, for introducing me and for also inviting me to this platform to share my passion around grief and supporting individuals who have gone through the loss and the death of their loved ones. There are two things that I wish I could experience right now, and that is I wish I could see all of you who are watching this video in person. I also wish I could hear your story about who and what you have lost. No doubt this year has been an overwhelming, awkward, highly uncomfortable, much disturbing year. I am tired of wearing masks, and I'm sure you are too. Sometimes I feel like I cannot breathe. And I hear from time to time from grievers that I just feel like I cannot breathe. The stress of this year has left many feeling like they cannot breathe. And for you who have lost your loved ones, I'm sure you can understand that, that there are moments when you feel like you're not able to breathe. Beside the COVID pandemic this year, it has been a year, a very difficult year for me like none other I have experienced in my personal journey. In a space of nine months, I moved three times. And with every move, my little doggy would look at me as though he was saying, we're moving again. I went through a job change. I sold my house that I lived in for many years. And to make matters worse, my dog that I loved so much died right before my last move. So no doubt this year has been a very, very difficult year with numerous losses and intense grief. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this deep grief that I have experienced several months ago and is still um, experiencing. I have lost significant people in my life, but I've never experienced such deep grief like the death of my little Teddy. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my little Teddy. Teddy was only two years old. He was my companion dog. Teddy allowed me to get to know the neighbors in my community. He helped me to connect with the people that I lived amongst. I traveled with Teddy from places that you probably have never been to. We traveled on the plane together. He was my therapy dog. At the end of a very difficult day caring for people who have lost their loved ones, he was my therapy when I go home in the evenings. He would greet me at the door like no one has ever greeted me. He was overwhelmed with joy to see me. We had a special bond. And it was very, very difficult to lose this five pound Yorkie Terrier. And it may sound very crazy for some people to realize that one can experience such deep grief after losing a pet but it's not crazy. And so when I think about those who have lost their loved ones, it allows me to understand on a deeper level that deep pain. And so I cannot imagine what you are going through after losing your wife, your husband, 
your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your parents, and your friends. For some of you, this is the first time you will be going through this Christmas season without your loved one. For some of you, you may dread going through this holiday season, and, and even though you may hear the joy of the beautiful songs and you see lights and glitters of Christmas, there's no joy in your corner of the world because you are going through the season without, so with, with the lack of someone special in your journey. Where do we find hope in our grief? Where do, where do, when you feel like you are stranded on an island by yourself with overwhelming grief, where do you find hope? There were times when I feel like I was stranded on an island by myself. Where do we find hope? I have done some research on hope and I have discovered that hope is not found in a thing. Even though a thing can uh, move you towards hope, but hope is found in a person, and that person is God. And this hope that we experience in God, it makes all the difference in our journey of healing in grief. And so, my friends, in the words of the psalmist David, he said this about hope. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Blessed are those who hope in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it. He remains faithful. And because he is faithful, we can hope in him. In another place, the psalmist says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Grievers at times are in a hurry to get over their grief. And I hate to disappoint you, but the key in dealing with grief is to take the time to walk through it. When you patiently walk through grief, you will see the light at the end of the tunnel. I live in a place where I'm close to the beach. And there's this place called Oceanside that I visit quite frequently. And in Oceanside, there is this tunnel that you can walk through to get to the other side and see the beautiful ocean up front. And so one day I decided to walk through this dark tunnel and it was indeed dark. There were times when I feel like turning back, but I keep telling myself that you must keep going. There was a time when I placed my foot, I thought it was on a log, and I thought it was stable, and as I put my weight on that log, it slipped underneath my feet, and uh, my, 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 foot, my feet went into the water. And so it gave me a picture of walking through the pain of grief going through that tunnel. It was messy, it was dark, it was gloomy, it was untidy, but I kept going and I was able to see the beauty at the end of the tunnel. And so as you walk through this journey with grief, it may be dark, it may be gloomy, it may be untidy, but I wanna guarantee you this, that it will get better as you continue to move through. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, do know that God is walking with you through this dark valley of grief. So how do you get through this grief day by day? I have five simple steps to help you on your journey this holiday season as you walk through your grief. The first step that I would like to share with you is acknowledgement. This is a difficult time right now, and I am hurting. It is important to be honest with yourself. And so as you walk through this valley of grief with the pain in your heart, it's important to acknowledge that this is a difficult time 
and I am hurting. The second step is this, is attention. And if you notice, every single word that I use begins with the letter A. So the second step is attention. Give attention to your emotions by acknowledging your feelings. I feel sad. I feel disappointed. I feel shocked. Some of you are still shocked. Some of you may be feeling numb. And it's important to give attention to those feelings. You may be angry that you're going through this holiday season without your loved one. You're frustrated because they're not there to provide the meal that they often provide. You may feel robbed. At times you may feel fearful, scared, and anxious. And so it's important to give attention to your feelings. So you wanna acknowledge, you wanna give attention. And the next step is to be available. Give yourself permission to be available to experience the gift of healing that awaits you out of the pain of loss. You cannot change the story of what happened, but you can choose how to respond to your grief. My friends, healing is a choice and it requires your commitment, courage, and discipline. The fourth step is adjustment. Every loss will need significant time and patience to adjust. And I encourage you to be patient with yourselves. And the fifth step is assistant. And what that means is to make sure that you are open to receive assistance and support from those around you. Cultivate an openness to supportive care during moments of grief can exceptionally, exceptionally be healthy for your mind, your soul, and your spirit. So be open to assistance. And do know that people need people. We need each other. We were never meant to struggle alone. So acknowledge your loss. Give attention to your feelings. Be available um, to, to, to experience the, the gift of healing. Adjustment. Remember that every loss takes time to, to adjust to and open yourselves to experience assistance from others. Dr. Earl Grohlman, an authority on grief, said these words. He said, grief is not a disorder, a disease or a sign of weakness. It is an emotional, physical, and spiritual necessity, the price you pay for love. The only cure, he said, for grief is to grieve. The only cure for grief is to grieve. And so the deeper you love, the more you love, the more painful it will be. And so give yourself the gift of healing and give yourself the permission to grieve. So as you go through this holiday season, do know that you will experience some grief and give yourself that permission to recall the memories, to touch the things that matters to you and to feel. During my transition, doing one of my transitions, I should say, a dear friend of mine gave me this beautiful visual, this beautiful plaque, and it's called I Am. And I place it in my office so that every time I look at it, I can be reminded that I am not alone. For those who are watching, do know that you are not alone. There are times when it will feel like you are alone, but you're not alone. The I am is with you. Every time I look at this beautiful picture of I am, it reminds me of hope. Hope makes all the difference in our journey. Hope gives me the courage to stand tall in the midst of my pain. It gives me boldness to face the unknown with perseverance, trust, and faith. My wish for you this season is that you will choose to have hope. One of my favorite birds 
is Bar Eagles. One weekend, I decided to hang out at this place called Whaling Island to just hang out with my grief. And so while I was walking and taking in the beautiful scenery, a couple pointed out a pair of bald eagles. And I watched them as they soar high and then they flew low. And up and down they will go. They will soar high and then they will flew low. And as I took in that scenery, it reminded me of the prophet Isaiah who said these words, that those who hope in the Lord will soar high like eagles, that they will run and not grow weary, that they will walk and not faint. My friends, as you go through this holiday season with moments of ups and moments of downs and up and down, high moments and low moments, Know that you are normal. It's not un unusual to feel that way. I encourage you to choose hope this Christmas season. And may the God of hope and peace fill your hearts. Choose hope and struggle well. God bless you. Welcome to Joy Through the Holidays with Adventist Health Hospice. We are deeply honored by the work that we do to support the members of our community during their journey through life. It's a time-honored tradition here 
that we, during the holidays, present our Tree of Hope to our employees and to our community. This Tree of Hope is a way to remember those that we have lost during the past year. We enjoy placing ornaments on the tree and hanging your loved one's name alongside of it so that everyone that passes remembers them in their own way. We're happy to bring some of our loved one's lives to you tonight. In honor of Chris Brammel. In honor of Ryan Mulcahy. In honor of Buddy Brown. In honor of Dorothy Dowdy. In honor of Deborah Wells. When I was a little girl, I lived in the Midwest. I did not like winter. The temperatures were often in the teens, often below zero, and the cold, gray dreariness of winter wore at my little heart when I would walk home from school day after day in that cold weather and see the gray skies, I would think it's going to be winter forever. I'm never gonna get warm again. And then there would be a day where somewhere in the midst of the patches of snow and ice, the little tiny green sprouts of purple crocuses and tulips would begin to emerge and break through that dirt that had been so cold and frigid all winter long. And I knew that spring was coming and that winter would end. Why share this story of a little Midwestern girl who got excited about tulips and crocuses? Because what tulips and crocuses know and what tulips and crocuses teach all of us is that when all seems dark and despairing, there is still hope. Hope is knowing that when it is least apparent, new life is readying itself to blossom. Desmond Tutu, South African theologian known most for his anti-apartheid and human rights activism, understood what it meant to face despair, sorrow, and no visible sign of hope. One of his most noteworthy quotes, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. And hope in the midst of grief is what we have gathered here together to remember. Each of you are personally grieving the absence of a husband, wife, mother, father, sister, brother, son, daughter or friend this holiday season. And you are doing it in a year of collective grief where ordinary routines, milestones like graduations and weddings and gathering with loved ones as we would be doing tonight has been restricted. Most of you have had to postpone memorial services, celebrations of life and rituals to spread ashes or stand together at a graveside. You have had to distance from the very people from whom you needed a touch or a hug. At times, the grief may have felt like it was simply too much. Too much sadness, too many no's, and not enough yeses. Hope can seem elusive in a time when the impact of a worldwide pandemic feels overwhelming, perhaps even suffocating at times. Added to that has been the stress of political division, racial tensions, wildfires, climate change, and an uncertain economy. And then we find ourselves in the midst of this holiday season. It's supposed to be the happiest time of the year, but it often feels exactly the opposite when your heart is grieving and there seems to be more darkness than light. Christmas carols piped in through the grocery store speakers may feel like the last thing you want to hear. Either they bring back nostalgic memories of time shared with the person who's passed on, or they irritate 
like salt in the wound when decking the halls and fa-la-laing hurts to even think about. One particular Christmas carol stands out as a testimony to a griever's broken heart renewed by hope. In 1861, civil war broke out in the United States. And just like now, the lives of Americans across the nation were disrupted as battles took place in areas where families had previously picnicked or harvested crops. Families and friends were divided by political lines. Mothers and fathers worried anxiously about their sons newly recruited as soldiers. Dystenery and typhoid fever were epidemic and responsible for as many deaths as those who were endured in combat. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's oldest son, Charles, was in the 1st Massachusetts Artillery. In the same year as the war's beginning, Longfellow was grieving the death of his much-loved wife, Fanny. She had died tragically in front of her husband. While melting wax to preserve a few locks of her daughter's hair, hot wax fell onto her dress, setting it afire. Longfellow desperately tried to extinguish the flames with a rug and finally with his own body, but Fanny died the next morning. As Christmas approached that year, Longfellow was deep in mourning his wife's death, his son's military service, and the state of the nation. He wrote, how inexpressibly sad are all holidays. These are words I'm sure you can relate to this year. Later, he wrote that his days were better to be wrapped in silence. He said, perhaps someday God will give me peace. He recorded his fears that his grief was so heavy he might be headed to an asylum. His sorrow was drowning out all peace, and the carols he heard felt nearly offensive to him. A Merry Christmas, say the children, but that is no more for me, he penned. He received a telegram then that his son was shot in the shoulder, the bullet nearly missing his spinal cord. There was concern of lifelong paralysis. Longfellow looked around him at a war he did not approve of and saw the broken world of pain and death and hate that surrounded him and hoped seemed out of reach. And yet, Longfellow clung to his faith and held on to a shred of hope. In that dark period, he wrote the lyrics to the Christmas carol, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. The pinnacle moment in the song goes like this. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, good will to men. Hope blossomed anew each spring after the frozen darkness of winter through yellow and red tulips and tiny purple crocuses. Hope shone through the darkest night of South Africa's tumultuous and divisive apartheid struggles. And hope was heard through the bells of Christmas by a broken-hearted husband and father in a war-torn country overcome by hate and epidemic illnesses. The coldest part of the night is usually right before the sun begins to rise. Darkness gives way to light as despair gives way to hope. Today we are here to witness to your grief. We are here to name those whose chairs are empty this year. We are here to find meaning in our losses. We are here to reclaim hope. We are here to bring the light of our loved ones into a dark and dismal world. In every twinkling light adorning a tree, see the light of your loved one's life shining on. In every traditional recipe baked, smell the aroma of love shared. In every holiday song, Hear the melody of past gatherings of family and friends. Embrace whatever faith anchors you. Trust that the memories tucked into your heart cannot be taken from you.
Determine to bring the best part of your loved one into the world through your own words and actions. Choose to leave despair behind. Honor the grief, knowing that sorrow validates the depth of the relationship and love you have experienced. Risk loving again. Believe that peace is possible in the midst of mourning. And above all else, let hope light your way and comfort your spirit. Please pray with me. Father God, we thank you that you are the God of hope and that you carry us from darkness into light. We trust you for this in your name. Amen. Once again, we want to thank you so much for being with us for this program. And remember the words, honor your grief. At this time, we will end our program with the strolling of the names of our loved ones that we truly miss. <laughs>